and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Music science every day. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Learning with friends is always so great. Speakers and beakers. What do we say? Together we're making this day so great. Engage, embrace, explore, explain. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're here. Some of you may already know me. My name is Mr. C. Welcome to my studio. This is my favorite place in the whole wide world. I can come here to learn about anything. I love to make media. I write songs, record videos, and over there, that's where I conduct experiments in my lab. Got the tape on, the paint roller's ready to go. Now we add our toilet paper. And now we see if it works like they said it would. What? What's wrong? What's wrong? Aha, gotta plug it in. Then I share them with the world, online, on air, really everywhere. The only thing cooler than learning about this amazing world we all live in is learning together with all of you. Hey, I've got an idea. Maybe you could help me with a new song. I just started researching about air and wow, I think it would be the perfect thing to learn about today. The first step in creating an amazing song, let's do research. We'll need to conduct experiments, record results, and most importantly, we need to have fun. Air is made up of invisible gaseous substances that surround the Earth. The air that surrounds our Earth is called the atmosphere. Air typically contains about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and small amounts of other things like carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and water vapor. Air molecules are constantly moving and bouncing into one another. In fact, air molecules are all around you at this very moment. Try this. Take your hands and fan them at your face. Do you feel anything? Most likely you're feeling a mini breeze or a small teeny tiny gust of wind. When we feel that wind, we know the air molecules are moving and brushing against our face. If you fan your face fast enough, it almost feels like you're outside in a windstorm. But how do we really know that air is out there? Can we prove it takes up space? Come on, let's try and experiment with some new science friends I recently met. Air is everywhere, even here at the mall where I'm exploring this concept with my new friends that I just met. These young scientists are going to determine and test to see whether or not these balloons can be inflated inside these two liter bottles. The only difference, the green bottle has a small hole in the bottom of it. Will that impact the experiment? Let's find out, make a prediction, and join us in this fun experiment. Do you think you can blow that balloon up for me? What do we have inside of this balloon right here, Michael? Air. 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 So do you think you can blow up that balloon inside of this bottle? Yes. 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 I think I can do it. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard? Try it again. It is hard. So it's not inflating, right? I'm gonna give you this bottle, same balloon, just a different color, but this time what I did is on the bottom here, I put a little hole. Can you see that hole right there? Yeah. So do you think you can maybe blow it up with this one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's give it a try. That is awesome. Why did it work? The air that was already in the bottle has a hole to escape that can let the balloon fill. So when you're putting air into that balloon, you're expanding the balloon, and then the other air that's in that column is able to do what? Escape. It's able to escape through that hole. So when we blow up this balloon, it doesn't inflate, but when you blow up that balloon, it inflates easily because... The air comes out. The air is able to escape, and the air from your lungs is able to fill up that balloon. Do you think you could ever get that to inflate? No. What's inside this bottle? Air. Is putting pressure inside the bottle and it will not inflate. So you felt the pressure actually increase on the bottle, didn't you? Right. That is a great observation. And how do you know that? <laughs> because air is everywhere. Because air is everywhere. Nice. That makes perfect sense. Air is everywhere and takes up space. And now I can confidently say, Air, air is everywhere. It takes up space around our face. It's here and there, it's everywhere. And that, that, that's a perfect line for the song. 
Air, air is everywhere. It takes up space, it's here and there. It's everywhere. Oh no. I was supposed to go to the gym to work out with Sven today. Yeah, Mr. C, where are you? You're supposed to be here at the gym getting buff today. Hi Sven, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about our workout today. I started writing a new song about air and I've been learning all sorts of neat things with all of my new friends. Yeah, Sven loves your music. It helps everybody in the world learn the new things. But you have to build your other muscles too, you know. Would you be interested in helping us understand air a little bit better? Of course I will help you. I know everything there is to know about mass. Kinder, I'm going to pump up your brain and use these balloons to show you how air has mass. I made the video. You want to watch it? It shows you how this inflatable bench press actually works. These two balloons are balanced, which means they have the same mass. If I take and cut a hole in one of them, the air escapes and the other balloon tips down. That's because it has air inside and air has mass. And you can see that in this experiment. If I want to get more buff, I simply add more weight. The mass. That explanation was awesome. And the song in the background is so cool. Is that yours? Yeah, that's my song. May I have your permission to use your music for my new air song? Yeah, of course you can use my music. It'll pump you up, Mr. C. Thanks, you're the best. See you later, Mr. C. Ah. And you know, anytime you're creating songs in media, it's really important to only use materials that you have permission to use. Other people work really hard to make their own content, so we want to be respectful of that work. It's also an important part of being a great digital citizen. Let's make a carbon dioxide balloon. First, take two spoons of baking soda and add them to your balloon. Then pour one cup of vinegar into your bottle. Pull the balloon over Turn it upside down and watch the baking soda pour into the bottle. You've created a chemical reaction and you're producing carbon dioxide gas which is now caught in the balloon and causes the balloon to expand. When you're done, tie it off and have fun playing with your carbon dioxide balloon. Now we've got some lyrics and a sweet beat. But I still need to learn more about air. Let's recap what we already know. Let me share my screen with you. We know that air takes up space. We know it has mass. But I wonder, what happens to those molecules when we heat and cool them? Air is so difficult to see, so we're gonna need to be creative to better understand air molecules and their motion. Today on What's Going to Happen. Hot water versus cold water. In the red corner, cup number one, measuring in at 16 fluid ounces with a temperature of 82 degrees Celsius. And in the blue corner, Cup two, measuring in at 16 fluid ounces with a temperature of eight degrees Celsius. On my count, your molecules will bounce around and mix the food coloring together as fast as possible. Mix away. Oh my goodness, the hot water is mixing that color around like it's nobody's business. Those molecules have way more energy and you can see how they are mixing that color together. Wait, look at the cold water. It's trying to mix, but it just doesn't have as much heat energy. Those molecules in the cold water just aren't moving around as fast. Temperature is a measurement of heat energy, and we can see that that hot water definitely has energy to mix things up. And that's it for today's episode. Tune back in next time for Hair Gel versus Hairspray. Let's go to the extreme and see how really cold temperatures affect air. I've got some liquid nitrogen here in the lab, but before I get it out, we need to think about science safety. Lab coat. Goggles. Gloves. Remember, nitrogen makes up about 78% of the air around us. Liquid nitrogen is minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit and is extremely dangerous because it's so cold. When liquid nitrogen changes from a liquid to a gas, it expands approximately 700 times in volume as it warms up. I've got an idea. It just popped into my head. Let's pour some liquid nitrogen into this metal bowl and add a balloon. Oh, 
Wow! The balloon is deflating. And then when I bring it back out, it starts to inflate again. That is amazing. amazing. All right, I've got another one. Same color. There we go. See, this balloon is going to expand back to its original size. The air molecules inside are starting to warm up because they're touching the air in this room. Those air molecules, as they gain a little bit of heat energy, start to bounce around more and take up more space. And we're almost back to its original size. I wonder how many balloons we can fit into this bowl of liquid nitrogen. We should try that, don't you think? like five balloons already. It's here, it's here, the solar bag's here. Let's do this. The transfer is really neat. It always goes from hot to cold, from hot to cold, from hot to cold. The transfer is really neat. It always goes from hot to cold, from hot to cold, from hot to cold. This is an amazing tool that we can use to illustrate what happens to air as it heats up. The sun is the power source for this. It's causing this bag to get hot, absorbing heat energy, and that heat energy is causing the air molecules inside to heat up. When those air molecules gain more heat energy, they bounce around faster. They need more space, so they expand. Basically, what happens is the air inside is now less dense than the air out here, allowing this to float up and hover in the sky. And that is a solar balloon. Let's add that to our journal. Molecules change speed as they gain heat energy. Hello, I'm Bob Newsflash for WAIR. The pressure continues to build as we wait our resident science expert, Adam Splitter's next demonstration. He's been planning this experiment for quite some time and you can certainly feel the excitement in the air. Let's connect with him now. Adam, we're so excited to see this is finally happening today. What can you tell us? Thanks, Bob. Adam Splitter here, and we are live, ready, and prepared to do this demonstration because we've been waiting a long time and the pressure has literally been building. We have a barrel behind us that has been building up steam inside and boiling, and it's ready to roll. Now, what does that mean for you guys at home? It means we're going to do an atmospheric pressure demonstration right here today, and it's going to be exciting. Let's check to see if our temperature is actually, in fact, ready to go. Okay, we're at 220 degrees Fahrenheit, which means the water inside is boiling. That means that the water vapor, that's steam, the water vapor is coming out, it's pushing all the excess air inside of there out. We're going to cap it and put it into that ice bath to see what happens when the air inside and the water vapor begins to condense. Let's try this. To get it nice and tight, we don't want any air coming in or air escaping. We're gonna lift this can, squeeze tight, lift, put it into the cold water. Now I'm gonna take this from you. And what's happening is this container, the air inside is beginning to cool. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of extra water on top of it. Whoa, that was awesome. Did you see that? That is the power of air, 14.7 pounds per square inch. 
it doesn't get better than that. That is a steel drum that had no chance whatsoever. Kaboom! Bob, back to you. Oh, that was awesome. Did you guys see that? Oh my God, are we still live? Oh, Bob, wasn't that awesome? Yeah, all right, back to you, Bob. Fantastic, Adam, and there you have it. Thank you for tuning in today for this crushing news here at WAIR, where our reporting is always a breath of fresh air. Mini Can Crush. Heat some water inside of an empty can until you see steam pouring out of it. Then turn it over in a cold ice bath. That's awesome. All right. This is just like Adam Splitter's experiment, but a little bit smaller. Oh, that was awesome. All right, and our last one. The pressure on the outside of the can is greater than the pressure on the inside, and therefore crushes the can. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Look at that. Look at that. That thing is like crushed. The power of air. That is air pressure at its finest. Very cool. Next time you're outside, look all around you. What do you see? During the day, you might see blue skies and fluffy clouds. At night, maybe you see stars and the full moon illuminating the sky. Although you can see these amazing things, you aren't seeing the many layers of our atmosphere. Our atmosphere is a protective layer of gases that wraps around our Earth and protects everything on our planet. It helps maintain temperature and also blocks out harmful ultraviolet rays from the sunlight. Our atmosphere has five different layers. We live in the lowest layer, the troposphere, and this is where weather happens. The next layer is the stratosphere, and this is where we see jets soaring through the sky. The ozone layer in the stratosphere absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays of sunlight, which makes this layer warmer. The mesosphere is the third layer of our atmosphere, and the temperature here begins to decrease dramatically. The coldest parts of our atmosphere are located in this layer and can reach minus 90 degrees Celsius. The fourth layer, the thermosphere, is a thin layer with far fewer air molecules. This layer is where astronauts spend their time orbiting our Earth. And lastly, the exosphere is the upper layer of our atmosphere where atoms and molecules escape into space. Scientific tools allow scientists to make observations and collect data. As you can see, this vacuum pump is attached to a plate and bell jar. The vacuum pump is going to remove the air from inside the jar. Let's see what happens with some different items. This balloon is filled up with some air. The air can't get in and the air can't escape the balloon. However, when we turn on the vacuum pump, the air inside the bell jar escapes. This allows the air molecules inside of the balloon to expand and fill up all of the vacated space. When we open the jar back up, the air rushes back into the bell jar and puts pressure on the balloon and it's back to its original shape. Marshmallows aren't just delicious, but they're filled with thousands of tiny little air bubbles. That's what makes them so fluffy. When we pull the air out of the bell jar, those little air pockets expand. Eventually they pop, and when they do, the marshmallow can't expand any farther. Let the air back in, oh, and they shriveled up. Look at that, they're like ginormous marshmallow raisins. Gross. Shaving cream also has air inside of it. When we turn on the vacuum pump, the air in the vacuum jar escapes and it causes those air pockets inside the shaving cream to expand. I gotta stop it there. Oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, gross. Let's build a DIY air cannon. For amazing DIY science, follow these instructions and you'll be sure to be the life of the party. 
and to impress all of your friends. First, gather your materials. A plastic cup, balloon, and scissors. Now, let's get to work. Cut the end off of your balloon. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. Nice and easy. A simple cut to take off the narrow end of the balloon. Now you've got it. The next step, cut a hole in the bottom of the cup. Slow and steady, those scissors are sharp. Fantastic. Simply wrap your balloon over the top of the cup. And now you've done it. You've made your very own super fantastic DIY air cannon. Pull back on the balloon end and you're ready to go. Pew, pew, pew. Hey, who's that cool kid with the awesome DIY air cannon? Why, of course, it's you! Blow away all your friends with your amazing, awesome air cannon. Pew, pew, pew. Let's take a few notes. Air creates pressure. Air is powerful. All right, so we're here at Gentle Breeze Hot Air Ballooning in Lebanon, Ohio. We're actually gonna be going up in the air here in a bit. I cannot wait to explore air from way up there. And I'm with Mark Weissman, who is going to be my pilot in the hot air balloon. Mark, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm a little nervous, but talk to me about a hard, hot air balloon. How does it actually work? As you can see behind us, there's a basket, and then there's the balloon, which is called the envelope, and we are going to fill it up with cold air. This is so cool. All that air is filling up this balloon. And once that cold air fills the balloon up, we will heat it up, heat that air up, and that's what causes it to rise. We are in a balloon that's 69,000 cubic feet. So to get a perspective, if you were to turn it upside down, you could fit 69,000 basketballs in it. So we're actually up in the air flying. Every time we want to raise and go higher in this balloon, we give the burner a pull. So we've been flying for about half an hour and we're coming in for a landing here. And we are literally scraping the dirt intentionally. We're just super low to the ground. This is so amazing to be able to fly, to make adjustments with a pull of a pull of a lever to heat up more air and create lift and cause that air to become less dense than the surrounding air. It just it's it's amazing. We're coming in for a landing. We're gonna bounce a couple times. Oh. Yeah, we got there. it, we got it, we're on the ground. We're just landing. When you're in a hot air balloon, you don't get to land wherever you want to land. You land where the wind takes you, and the neighbors get to join in the festivities. Wow, I've had such an amazing time learning about air with all of you today. I love making music about all the new things I'm learning. Speaking of music, air, air, it's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. it takes a space around our face, it's here and it's there, it's here and it's there. air, air, it's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. it's what we breathe, it's all we've got, so we need to share, air, it fills the sky, I won't deny, it's what we breathe, five layers stacked up high with gases that we cannot see, these layers make up our atmosphere, and block the sun's ultraviolet rays which travel here, air, our atmosphere, adding pressure all the round. It's got mass and since it's stacked, it's pretty forceful on the ground. 14.7 pounds per every square inch. Pressure's on, stand up strong, it's the air you're feeling. And when we think of air, it's something we see through. We call it matter, takes up space, and yes, it has mass too. Five layers of air, yes, they're stacked up really high. Our atmosphere, it helps us hear our blanket in the sky. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere. Thermosphere, exosphere, stacked up here. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere. 
thermosphere, exosphere, stacked up here. Air, air, it's everywhere. 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 It takes a space around our face, it's here and it's there. It's it's there. Air, air, it's everywhere. 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 It's what we breathe, it's all we've got, so we need to share. Air, it's composition made of many things. So take a listen while you're breathing out and breathing in. Nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, CO2, molecules in motion, yes, and they're floating right past you. Make sure you check out the song and extra activities online. Remember, science is wherever you are. What was your favorite activity today? Mine? I can't decide. I guess we'll have to meet back here in the studio soon for more Speakers and Beakers. Speakers and Beakers. Speakers and Beakers. Music, science, every day. Speakers and Beakers. Speakers and Beakers. Speakers and Beakers. Learning with friends is always so great. Speakers and Beakers, what do we say? Together we're making this day so great. Engage, embrace, explore, explain. Speakers and Beakers. Oh, that was awesome. Exploring the world together today. Oh yeah, they kiss. the video, let's sing along. Speakers and beakers. Here in the lab or even at home, march to the speed and call it our own. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Speakers and beakers. Music, science, every day. Speakers and beakers.